Okay, so this is section 6.3, which is parametric equations and motion. We're going to talk about parametric equations, parametric curves, eliminating the parameter, lines and line segments, and simulating motion with a graph. So I'm doing this video a little bit differently because I want to show you how to graph these parametric equations on Desmos. Okay. So a parametric curve, parametric equations, um, we have looked at this a little bit earlier this year, but we didn't get um, very in-depth with what parametric equations are. So basically, if you think of a graph of, and you have a point x, y, it's taking each of those coordinates and defining them with a different equation. So when we played around on Desmos with this earlier this year, we can make some pretty cool looking graphs by um, setting your x equal to one equation and your y equal to another equation. So the graph of the ordered pair x, y, where x is f of t and y is g of t. Um, and they are both functions defined on interval i of t values. So this all together we call a parametric curve. And then each of the equations, the f of t and g of t, are parametric equations. And then we call t the parameter. Okay. So our first example here says, for the given parametric interval, graph the parametric equations x equals t squared minus 2 and y equals 3t over each of these different intervals. Okay. So this is where I want to show you how you would do this on Desmos. So... First thing, let's see if I can do this at the same time. Okay, so I'm going to write it as an ordered pair, but instead of writing x and y, I'm going to write what it is defined by t. So I'm going to write t squared minus 2 for my x coordinate, and then my y coordinate is 3t. So I'm going to write 3t. Oops. 3t. Okay, so now I have that set up, and you'll notice instantly when you type that in, you are given the parameters down here to define. So we can do the first part, negative 3 to 1. Okay, and if I look over here, my graph looks kind of like that, so I'm just going to sketch that here for you. Oops. Okay, and then our next interval is from negative 2 to 3. So I'm going to change this from negative 2 to 3. If we go back to our slide here, that's going to look kind of like that. And then our last one is from negative 3 to 3. And that looks like a parabola on its side. Okay, so what you'll notice is all of these are the same graph. We're just looking at different portions of that graph. So um, that's what defining t with different parameters is going to give you a slightly different look depending on how what your minimum and maximum t value is going to be. Okay, so example two is eliminating the parameter. So eliminating the par parameter and identifying the graph of the parametric curve. So how we do that is we, so we have x is equal to t plus 1 and y is equal to 2t. So I'm going to start with our x equation. So we have x equals t plus 1, and I'm going to solve that for t. So I'm going to get t alone on one side, so I'm going to subtract the 1 to the other side. So t would be equal to x minus 1. Now, kind of like when we're solving systems of equations, I'm going to substitute what t is into our y equation. So y is equal to 2t. So y would be equal to 2 times x minus 1. And then if we distribute that, we get 2x minus 2. So what I did there, using substitution, is I eliminated the t, okay? And I wrote it in terms of just x and y. So if we were to go over here to kind of compare what that's going to look like, so if I have t plus 1 and 2t, Okay, and then this is negative infinity to infinity. Now it's going off my graph. It doesn't like that. So let's just stick with negative 3 to 3. You can see it's a line. 
Okay, you can also see if I graph y equals 2x minus 2, hey, look, it's the same line. So that's not a coincidence. So if we're describing this, we would say the graph is a line. And again, we find that by solving for t and then plugging that into the other equation. Okay, so this one's a little bit trickier. We're going to eliminate the parameter on this one as well. So we have x equals 3 cosine of t and y equals 3 sine of t. So, and we're on the parameter 0 to 2 pi. So if we think about this one, um, we know from our previous chapter that cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. So I'm going to use that idea. So I'm going to say, okay, let's do x squared plus y squared. So that would be 3 cosine of t squared plus 3 sine of t squared. And my whole reason for doing that is because I know I can turn this into 1 somehow. So if I square each of these, I'm going to get 9 cosine squared plus 9 sine squared t. And then I can factor out that 9. So 9 times cosine squared plus sine squared is just going to be 9 times 1. So what I've done is I've created an equation here. So x squared plus y squared is equal to 9. So if we think back to our circle equations, this is going to be, the graph is going to be a circle. And because there's no values plus or minus with the x and the y, we're going to have, um, it's going to be centered at the origin. So centered at 0, 0. And our radius is the square root of what we're equal to. So it's going to be our radius of 3. Okay. And let's go ahead and go over here and just kind of play around with that so we can see. So this one would be 3 cosine of t. And 3 sine of t. And you can see I'm going to get rid of the line there. So, and this was between 0 and 2 pi. So there you go. There's our circle. And you can see it has a radius of 3, and you can see it's centered at 0, 0. So kind of cool to see the connections there. Okay, so this last one is going to be finding parametric equations for a line. So we're going to go back to talking about vectors a little bit here. So find a parametrization of the line through the points A is 2, 3, and B is negative 3, 6. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to say that point P, which has the coordinates x, y, is on the line created by AB. So it's just an arbitrary point on line AB. So if we think about this, so sometimes it helps to like visualize a picture. So 2, 3 would be right here. Negative 3, 6 might be up here. So here would be line AB, and we're just saying point P. I'm going to put point P right there. So we're going to have um, a vector OP. Okay, so line segment OP would be we could say, so if this is A and this is B, we can get vector OP by doing vector addition, and we can say vector OA, so if this is again from the origin to A, plus from A to P will equal vector OP. Okay, so hopefully that's making sense so far. So then we also know that AP is going to be a scalar multiple of AB because they're on that same line. So we could multiply AP by some number and have it equal AB. So I'm going to rewrite this now as OA plus T is going to just be some scalar value times AB. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use our vectors here. So we have vector x, y. So we're going to take, we're going to use this equation that we have over here. 
So OA, so from our origin to A, would be 2, 3, plus T times AB. So AB would be the vector from A to B. So we're going to use, um, just subtract our components here. So this would be negative 3 minus 2 and 6 minus 3 running out of space. Okay, so then if we simplify that, we have vector 2, 3 plus t times, we simplify that be negative 5, 3. So then we can write this as one single vector. So we're going to take 2 plus, nope, sorry, not plus, be minus because it's negative 5. So 2 minus 5t and 3 plus 3t. So what we did is we just took that information and these now you can see are written as um, parametric equations. We have parameters there. Okay, let me know if you have any questions.